And happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to the Beautiful Butterfly Show. I'm your host, B Fly. Hope that you guys are having a great week thus far. Uh, spring is officially here, but it does not feel like that in here in North Carolina. Uh, it is like cold of all colds today. So I don't know uh, what Mother Nature is, is doing, uh, but it is officially spring. So I um, hope that puts most of us in a better mood and spring us into some new and great things. But nevertheless, we are back, you guys. We are back with another incredible segment. Um, tonight, uh, we're delving into mental health. And tonight, specifically, we're focusing on how it um, affects the Black community. You know, how do um, Black community view therapy, um, mental health in general, um, signs of it? Um, and tonight, if you um, have experienced some things when it comes to mental health. We want you to share that too. If you have some questions, we want you to share that as well. And so joining me tonight, special guest, Genesis Blue, you guys, I'm excited because I met her years, years ago uh, when I think I was like just a little baby butterfly in this thing. But um, I am excited to have her back on here tonight uh, to join me on this phenomenal topic as well. So if you're out there, make sure you share the show, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those great places. Let everybody know that the Beautiful Butterfly Show is on tonight. And so we're not going to delay any longer. We're going to bring our special guest on here. Welcome. Mm -hmm. I, gotta, I don't know. It's the hip hop artist. I, I have to do that. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, girl. Yes. First of all, shout out to you because y'all don't know whoever looking, man. She been deep. She been deep in and I was just telling her she been doing this before anybody was ever thinking about making a podcast. Now any old raggedy person can make a podcast. You already had the discernment to do that a long time ago, sis. So I just yeah. want to give you your flowers and keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I definitely appreciate it. I definitely appreciate it. And of course, it's been a while um, since you've been on the show. And so yeah. a lot, of course, has taken place and all those Absolutely. great things. And so before we get into that, for the folks, uh, this may be their first time seeing your face, hearing your voice. Tell us a little bit about who is Genesis Blue. Oh, appreciate you. So I <laughs> I am Genesis Blue. First off, most know me by as an MC. I'm a hip hop artist. I've done a lot of really fun things. Um, we could talk about it at a later date. I'm not good at bragging on myself, but I <laughs> am an MC. You can check out my music on all platforms. Just type in Genesis Blue. But I'm also a licensed professional counselor, which we all know is called a therapist or a psychotherapist. Mm -hmm. And I do that. I'm also uh, what we call a raptivist. So I like to combine music and activism to help yeah. advocate for the community, especially our community. So yeah. just so happy to be here today to talk about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. We definitely appreciate you coming on. And so, um, of course, um, I guess when I first met you, you were definitely um, heavy into MCN um, and getting out here and spreading that positive message around. How did that begin for you? What made you decide, you know what, I got some things I want to say. I want to get out here in the community and share it with my people. Uh, yeah. What was that inspired that? Um, in the yeah, beginning? yeah, great question. So actually, since a little girl, because my grandmother was very much an activist. Um, if you're listening from Houston, she was from the Fofo. That's Acres home. That's whatever the roughest part of South Carolina is. It's very similar <laughs> to <laughs> Acres home. OK, that's where she was. And so I spent a lot of time with her and I saw her like run off gang members like she was scared of no one. Wow. Um, she took me to my first march against drugs. She was heavy on the war against drugs. Yeah. Took me to my first march and protest like when I was a little kid. So I already knew like that was instilled upon me. But then it resurfaced, resurfaced probably when I was 12 years old. I started just writing poetry. So I actually really love poetry and spoken word thing. But yeah. um, then listening to hip hop around that time, I was like, oh, this sound even better if I put it <laughs> over a track. So let's do that. So yeah. I've been doing that since 12 Um and it just took off from there. I sat it down for a little while, obviously, to go to college and uh, obtain several degrees. Right. And then, and then I returned to it later on. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so, uh, you know, seeing your uh, grandmother just get out here, you know, and, and, and be that person to stand up against things and be vocal and passionate about it. Do you believe, you know, that has definitely absorbed in you even into your adulthood? Um, absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah. A one thousand percent. I would not yeah. be who I am or where I am if it was not for my grandmother and just yeah. like actually just awesome black women in my life. Absolutely. Like, awesome black women overall really, really raised the hell out of me. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is awesome. That is awesome. And so, of course, um, tonight we're talking about mental health. Um, and one of the things that is interesting to me when I was thinking about this topic is that mental health has always existed, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but it seems like nowadays there's a huge or even greater focus on it, um, to a certain extent. And so, what made you want to get into this field because not everybody is built, you know, for yeah, this field. Yeah. And so what inspired you to get into this field specifically? That's a great question. Uh, childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. At first I was like, when I was a little girl, I want to be a lawyer. Cause I like debating and yeah. you know, I'm a nerd. Yeah. Um, then experiencing my own trauma. And then in high school, Oh, as an elective, you could take an intro to psych class. And I absolutely fell in love. It's really that simple. I was like, oh my God, that's what I want to do. And I'm just one of those people, like I stick to what I say I'm going to do. <laughs> right. I what I wanted to do it. So I'm doing it and I never detracted from that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so getting into this, uh, what were your expectations or did you have any expectations when you came into this field? expectations of course you think you're gonna save the whole world <laughs> and then you realize that some people don't want to be saved don't wanna be and that uh our community specifically it was you know they know they have to do it but they go kicking and screaming you know what i'm right. saying right. when i first started in mental health because i've been in it for a minute i'm not no new therapist right i've been around <laughs> uh, when i first started in therapy i had very few black clients. It was actually white people. I had mm -hmm. lots of white people. And now I can say um, that most of my caseload now is black and brown people. Right. And that's a beautiful thing uh, to see the turnaround. Like it changed probably 200 percent, you know, in the other direction. And that lets me know that something's changing in the world. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. When it comes to black people in, you know, in particular, what do you think it is? Um, I, I, I took a, a poll on, on different um, hmm. sites and people gave some insight on what they thought, you know, makes us not want to seek the help. We know that things are going on. We know, like as you talked about, we know that we've experienced some trauma mm -hmm. and we got some things that we need to deal with. But what have you found? Mm -hmm. um, throughout the time that you've been doing this, the reasons why specifically mm -hmm. black people mm -hmm. don't want to seek um, help necessarily. Right, right. So this is deep, right? It's really a dissertation, right. but I'll try to just hit some, <laughs> hit some <laughs> not no fast answer. Right, but, of course. You know, of and we course. never want to talk about how we are affected <laughs> as far as back as slavery, but it's very true, right? Yeah. In slave yeah. During slavery, we had to hide our pain Right. And just keep up, uh, keep going, keep right. going until we get where we're going. Right? right. And so then we took that into black homes today. Right. And it's just right. like, oh, something happened to you. Uh, don't say anything. Just let it go. It'll it'll pass. Like we're really <laughs> those people where we're like, if we don't talk about it, it doesn't exist. Right. Right. And that's right. Just, right. That's just not the case. We're afraid to actually feel pain. Um, sometimes it's because we see the pain as weakness. Um, right. sometimes we're so used to the pain that we're numb to it. Right. Yeah. So we're like, right. yeah, that I expected that would happen because nothing ever goes right for us. Right. right. And so it's like one of those things where you become numb to it. So it's so many things. It's generational trauma. It's the stigma that you're going to be weak or, or guess what? You telling our business, you telling mm -hmm. the family's business right. or, you, or right. your parents is like, I didn't raise you to be crazy. Why are you crazy? And it's <laughs> like, yeah, you took some part in that, but we'll get to that another time. You know, it's so mm -hmm. many reasons, but but it's yeah. yeah, it's a generational thing. It's a yes. community thing. It's a cultural thing. Right. Um, but like I said, it's starting to turn around, but it is still ever present. It's for right. sure present. Absolutely. Because the, the thing about it is <clears throat> you often hear people uh, make, you know, even light of the situation or having that crazy uncle 
or that crazy aunt in their family, you know, who was just known for, you know, telling people off, putting people in their place. Um, and sometimes saying some really harsh stuff, <laughs> you know, in the midst of that. I just didn't know they wasn't right. I had an uncle, I was like, this dude is really weird. But come to find out, like, you know, back in the day, they call it shell shock from the military, right? So he wasn't right, but everyone right. just treated him like he was completely normal. It makes no sense. We yeah. knew this dude had mental health issues, but yeah. no one no one acknowledged that. Instead, yeah. they made it like, oh, he's just weird. Just let him be over there and doing mm -hmm. his thing. And if we would have got that man help long before when he yeah. first started showing symptoms, he would be in a much better place. And I wish I could give you a happy ending, but he doesn't have a yeah. happy ending uh, yeah. because we didn't do what we needed to do as his yeah. family, yeah. you know? Right. Because oftentimes we're, we're told, you know, oh, that's just the way they are. Correct. You know? And so mm -hmm. it's like, okay, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. We don't want to address that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Why, do we leave, why do we tend to leave wounds unhealed? That is my biggest issue with yeah. black people. We tend to leave wounds unhealed. Sometimes I hear people's stories and they're so traumatic. Right. You're talking about T. Teresa. Okay. My client stories <laughs> will smoke her stories any day. Oh and goodness. But the way they talk about it is sort of so matter of factly. Mm -hmm. It's just like you don't realize how very traumatic what you're saying. That's what right. I'm saying. We don't even recognize it as trauma. It's more like, oh, that's what's supposed to be happening to us. Like, right. no, that's not supposed to be happening to you. Exactly. You, shouldn't, you shouldn't be experiencing that. Okay. You know. And so I got to first tell them that they're being traumatized. They don't even realize they're being traumatized. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so for you getting into this, you, you mentioned, you know, growing up and having your own trauma. And so for you, when was that that moment or that time that you said, you know what, I need I need some help. I need to get be able that's to work through the trauma that I've experienced. That's an excellent question. And I wish I could say it was some deep reason. But I was like, oh, I was in my master's program and I said, I'm going. To, uh, how can I be a therapist? And I never been. And so our college had free therapy, obviously, yeah. for students. Right. Yeah. So I just signed up. And my first therapist ever was like an old white man. And it was not a great experience because he was an old white mm -hmm. man. We could talk about cultural. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, yep. Late, we will, we will. later, but he did not really seem interested in what I had to say. It was yeah. very, yeah. So, but yeah, that's why I originally went. And even though that experience wasn't great with him, I was like, okay, I can do this. I think I just need that with somebody who is more culturally appropriate for me. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. When did you know that your trauma um, was affecting you specifically? Ah. In college. College was yeah. such a great, you know, these kids today don't want to go to college. College was such a beautiful experience. It was. Like, what are you talking about? A butterfly, a cocoon, man? Come <laughs> on, man. It really took me there. It was in college. And you yeah. know why? Because I was so damn angry. Mm. I was an angry person and I never really thought about my anger because my mother was very angry and my grandmother had passed by then and a couple of other people who were very influential. I dealt with a lot of grief. And so I was angry. I didn't know why I didn't connect it with the pain and the hurt yeah. and the grief. Um, but once one time in college, I was known for popping off, like, cause I was in, a, I was a Zeta, I'm a Zeta, right? So I would like feel very protective of my sorority sisters and I would always be wanting to fight and cuss people out. Yeah. And then one day I can remember, and they probably don't even remember this, but it made an impact on me. We were getting ready to go to a function or a party and they was like, Hey, Yvette. We're not going to get into no fight today. We just want to have fun. <laughs> and that moment just made me say, oh, my God, that's how you see me. So you people know. don't even sometimes look at how people view you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't want to be viewed as the angry black girl right. who people don't even want to go out with because they're scared you're going to get into a right. fight. And so that's when I was like, OK, let me go back and trace this anger. And by then I'm learning more and more about mental health in my program. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, this is why I'm angry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Having dealt with the grief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's weird how we have those moments of that. It just like you said, it just hits us because for my so simple. Right. It yeah, wasn't no yeah. crazy. Moment. Yeah. It was just regular Absolutely. Day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because myself, like in college as well. That's when it became before me because uh, a lot of people 
don't believe it, but I, I used to be that person. Like if somebody did something, I'm gonna let you know you, mm -hmm. you did something wrong, right? Mm -hmm. So my friends were like, man, you know, you, you're not afraid to put somebody in their place. And so it wasn't until like one day, um, I think I went off on this guy for saying something and I mm -hmm. felt like, man, that was a little harsh, you know, uh -huh. like, man, like, do I have to be that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I you know, even for myself, I was like, man, that was, that was, that was kind of harsh. Mm -hmm. And so I really had to like check myself, you know, yeah. in that moment, like, okay, you know, I don't want people thinking like, man, she got a nasty attitude. You know, mm -hmm. she's so angry exactly. um, all the time, because like you said, when you get that mirror, put up in your own face, mm -hmm. you know, and you see like how you behaving or how people view you, yeah. um, you know, it, it can, it can definitely impact you in the way you, mm -hmm. you proceed forward. Now I could have yeah. said, well, the heck with that. This is how I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's not who you ultimately want to yeah. be. Right. That was yeah. a different version yeah. of you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. And so uh, one of the things I also wanted to delve into, because you we, we talked about generational and you were talking about how, you know, mom was angry and there were some other people that were angry. And so a lot of times we don't realize that falls through the, the DNA um, a lot of times, you know, mm -hmm. um, our behavior and our mannerisms. And so mm -hmm. um, in, in your experience, Growing up, did you think like, man, my mama was like really angry, you know? Like, did you, did you think that? Like, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew yeah. something wasn't right, but it's funny the DNA, right? Because mm -hmm. when I was in my mother's house, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna, you know, you, I'm not gonna be like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. I went off to college, and what did I do? I exhibited the mm -hmm. same behavior. Yeah. And my mom's anger is also because of her grief, if mm -hmm. that gives you any more details, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Yeah. So again, just the generational effect. So absolutely, we can know it's wrong and still perpetuate the behavior based on yeah. what our environment demonstrated to us. Right. I didn't know how else to express grief mm -hmm. when people passed away in our family. You just went to the funeral and nobody ever talked about it again. Mm -hmm. We got to stop doing it. Y'all stop yeah. doing it. Yeah. <laughs> we got to talk yeah. about the grief. We got to talk about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because we see, well, I, I guess for me now, I see a lot of people, especially <clears throat> my age group, um, who are dealing with grief in a whole different manner. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because like you said, we used to go to funerals, you go to the repast, you get something to eat, and it's we're done. done. Mm -hmm. And so now you're seeing where people are literally struggling on a day-to-day -day basis because mm -hmm. grandma's gone or mama's gone or, you know, these, these people who played, you know, important mm -hmm. roles in their life are gone and they're struggling daily. Yeah. you know, to get with that, you know, and I see uh, even some of my, my friends recently who have lost their parents and, and it's like that heavy grief mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. just carrying it, you know, and so oftentimes we, we, the first thing we like to tell people now is like, okay, maybe you should go get some therapy. And so Amen. people Amen. are like, well, okay, mm -hmm. you know, well, yeah. I, I'll think about it. But then yeah. there are people, and I think you mentioned this at the beginning of the show, who don't think anything's wrong. No, you know, so. no, they're okay. So, so yeah. what I tell people like that is okay. If you, the physical and the mental is, is extremely similar, right? Mm -hmm. So if you break your arm, what is the first thing that you would do? You, you would just go see a doctor. Go. You would even yeah. go to an ER because you'd be like, I need to get this fixed. Now, if right. you were shot, you would want the ER yeah. right away. You would <laughs> want to go get assistance. Yep. Why do we treat our mental health differently, right? Mm -hmm. So the grief is just like a bullet hitting you. Absolutely. And what they choose to do is walk around with open wounds saying, I'm okay. My arm is broken. I got a gunshot on my chest, but I'm good. I can handle mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You look ridiculous because you're actually <laughs> grieving. You're actually yeah. bleeding, right? Yeah. And if you don't heal your wounds, then you bleed on others. Right. And that's a deeper thing. Is the healing is not just for you. You right. can heal an entire generation, an entire family by healing yourself. Absolutely. And so at this point, like we have some type of responsibility to heal ourselves if we care about others around us. Right. Sorry, I'm on a tangent. No, but I'm no, passionate no. about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because 
<clears throat> we don't realize how much that grief pours off into other people yes. and how we treat other people. Mm -hmm. You know, we may have some really wonderful people in our life and in our circle, mm -hmm. but we treat them like crap because or you're taking them away, right? Yeah. So you isolate, yeah. you isolate, yeah. you don't utilize your support system. And that's yeah. one of the first things we do. I'm cutting everybody off. I don't want to talk to nobody. Yep. And that does not mean your problem doesn't exist yeah. just because yeah. we talk about it. The absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. <laughs> right. <laughs> Shout out to the boondocks. Yeah, watch, watch the, the absence of evidence is not yeah. evidence of absence. Just because you pretend it is not there does yep. not mean, in fact, yep. it is there. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because when we turn back on that phone, when we come back at the house, guess what? The problem is still there. It's still it there. It's correct. You know, it's just maybe a different day a few hours later. That's but, right. You know, the problem is is definitely still prevalent and still exists. And so um, and, and one of the comments that I did receive uh, from someone when we were talking about mental health when it comes to the black community was um, a lot of us have been told don't talk about what goes on in our house, of course. But then there is also religion plays a part. Ooh. Pray about it. Mm -hmm. Pray about it. Mm -hmm. So in your, you know, in your expertise, in your in your in your sessions. How much does religion play a part on us getting the help that we need? Mm -hmm. I don't let anybody come to my office without telling them they need some kind of spiritual foundation. That's just a fact. You don't mm -hmm. have to you don't have to subscribe to religion, mm -hmm. but you have to have a spiritual foundation. Mm -hmm. So we as humans, we are physical, we are mental, we are spiritual. And right. the people and the people who operate the best in life, who has the best quality of life, right. they tend to do well in mental physical and spiritual. So we need that element. However, if your religious practice is causing you more harm than good, mm -hmm. you've got to reevaluate some things, yeah. right? Yeah. So let's take the idea of prayer. Just pray. Well, anybody who's, you know, I'm not even deep into religion. I was raised in a Catholic church, a white Catholic church. I'm not even deep into b biblical things, but I know yeah. one thing they're going to say is you're supposed to pray and also work, right? So right. it's just like, <laughs> this is doing the work. And right. then it's like you praying, but maybe God sent you a therapist. Like, mm. that's what I'm saying. Don't play these games. Like, oh, yeah. if I just pray, no one ever said it was going to be just a random occurrence. You're going to get better. You would have to do the work. You would right. have to, you God gave me a gift like what I do is a gift I was supposed to be doing this some people right. are just getting degrees and trying to make money off of this thing but this is what I do I live breathe and eat and sleep this right yeah. and so I know that when somebody comes into my office that is a spiritual connection like I'm here to help them heal and that is the assignment that is given to me how can you not see that as spiritual you know right. yeah absolutely and also <clears throat> religion um, and even, you know, has has made people uh, want to harbor the things that they have experienced, you know, mm -hmm. because, um, you know, you've heard about even people taking vows and all type of things that they would never discuss. Mm -hmm. um, and so we see now even um, on social media and the public, the news, people who were athletes, um, singers, the things that they experience, you know, um, on their journey from the people around them. But due to, you know, that environment, they were told we're never to speak of this again. Mm. You know, so they've they've carried, you know, all of that trauma with them all of that time. And so mm -hmm. when you when, when we look at trauma, um, what does trauma look like? Because sometimes people don't know, you know, mm -hmm. what does trauma look like? Yeah. And that's different for every person. Yeah. Right? So right. I have to tell people this a lot of times when they don't think their teen is depressed. Right. So a teen can be acting out, skipping school, fighting, talking back to their mother. And I will go, oh, he's depressed. He's not depressed. He fine to me. He just got a bad attitude. He just bad. No, that's actually not true. Teenagers, especially boys, a lot of times will demonstrate sadness through anger. Guess why that is? We always demonstrate anger to them. We don't teach them other emotions. Yeah. We don't let them say, I feel disappointed. I feel hurt. I right. feel scared. We don't let them say that. So right. yeah, their answer is going to be anger. So yeah. trauma is really how we act out trauma is really based on a lot of things, but one being how we saw it growing up, how we survived growing up. So if you learn to survive by isolating and being quiet, 
and stand to yourself, that's what you're going to do when you experience trauma. Yeah. If you if you turn into like, I want to fight everybody because I was traumatized, that's what you're going to do. Like you're basically going to act it out based on what you know mm -hmm. that you think it's protecting you. Right. right. So anger is one thing that we use to protect ourselves from hurt, if you think about it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, a lot of times you'll see anger. A lot of times you'll see depression. A lot of times you'll see anxiety, right? And so it right. does look different for every single person. And that's why you should talk to a therapist about yeah, it. Absolutely. Why do you believe, because as I mentioned earlier in the show, that um, mental health has become even more of a focus um, now mm -hmm. in community and just around the world in general. Uh, mm -hmm. We look at people who may have you know, committed crimes and the first thing they say is, you know, oh, they have a yeah. mental, you know, they got a mental illness mm -hmm. or, or whatever. And so why do you think there's a heavy focus um, specifically nowadays when it comes to mental yeah. health? Yeah, it's a conglomeration of a lot of things, right? Mental yeah. health is actually a fairly new science right. comparatively to other sciences. And so that's one thing. It's about the zeitgeist. It's time, you know, it's time. Yeah. Yeah. It's mental health's time on the stage. And that coupled with more celebrities, people in power talking about it. Um, also with, of course, media and people talking about it on social media, the TikToks right. and things like that. Well, people realize, oh, I'm not alone. Oh, I'm not the only one feeling this. Oh, it's actually okay to say it aloud. Right. So I think, yeah, it, it's just taken on like wildfire because of just a lot of perfect things happening all at once, perfect alignment for it to be time for mental health to shine. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and when you, when we talked about, because you talked about, you know, your clients. And so at first, when you started, um, you had a, a different demographic of, of clients mm -hmm. um, coming in. And so when you first began and you, you, you had the white clients coming in, what were, like what were you thinking? Did you think like, man, where where are my people? Like where where yeah. are we at? Yeah, you know? I had no clue. I don't know why I was so. I thought they was just gonna sign up, but that's sign not up. how I went. So yeah. you're absolutely right. It was yeah. more. I was very like, oh. Okay. I mean, white people are fine. Like they, they come to their appointments. I'm going to tell you, they're a lot easier clients because if you say, go do this, they'd be like, okay. A lot yeah. of times they will be more compliant where us, we got to like, it takes a minute sometimes to get through. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at first I was very shocked. And I think it's only, like I said, because of more and more people talking about it, it gives people permission to say, let me get help. Also insurance companies started supporting it. I don't know if you yeah. know that, but before like people were paying out of pocket out of a pocket. lot of times, or yeah. guess what? They didn't even know their insurance would pay for. I still get clients today be like, my insurance will pay for? Mm -hmm. Yes. And actually you have an EAP program, which will give you free sessions. Most companies, big wow. companies have that. So it's just like people didn't even know. So the information age, right. Allows you to like get the information right so that's why we're seeing that increase but it was funny at first i <laughs> like okay like fine you know just whatever <laughs> and, and specifically with your with your black clients uh, when it comes to mm -hmm. coming into that session mm -hmm. um and, and talking about the things they have experienced um do you do you often recognize that first hesitation to I don't know if I want to share this. You know, oh, I don't know. Absolutely. If, yeah. I, I yeah. love it when I have a client in, a, in the first session, they're just telling me things. And then like the fifth session, when they realize I'm really not going to tell their business and I'm really mm -hmm. not judging, judging them, they will actually say the thing that they really want to say. Right. right. Like, like also I'm gay and I never told anyone that or right. also I'm this, you know, and right. I'll be like, okay, like, <laughs> it's, like it's yeah. fine. I don't care. Yeah. You know? But yes, because, and, and that just tells you how deep the trauma with is, is for us about self judgment, mm -hmm. right? We tend to judge ourselves very harshly because in our community, you're supposed to be this, you're supposed to be that. And like, it's, it's, it's heavy. It is heavy yeah. for us to even admit the things that we're, we're struggling with because right. of that. So, yeah. yeah. And, and one of the things also um, in, in that is the trust, as you mentioned, knowing that I'm going to be able to have this conversation with you and it's not going 
going to leave oh, this right. room. Uh, and I think that's a big issue because a lot of times in, in different families, you know, we might have said something to somebody and it just yes. spread. Like, yes. girl, did you know so and so is no longer with their husband? You know, mm -hmm. or did Correct. you know so and so Correct. is saying literally, that? literally yeah. they are traumatized by that. And Absolutely. they and and so it takes them forever, like to pick up the phone and say, Hey, I need to see someone. That's why I really love again the information age, the technology age, because they can send an email now and say, right. Hey, I want it because my website, you can just go in and say, I want to see someone that yeah. feels a lot safer to them. Right. Absolutely. Um, and, or you can call, call or text, you know, but they feel safer because you're right. It's that, oh my God, this, I, it's the word exposed. They feel exposed. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, here's, here's the really, my male clientele, my black male clientele has increased so much. And what I have noticed is most men, no one have ever sat down. Let me not say most men, because then they'll be like, uh. <laughs> a lot of men mm -hmm. have never had anyone just say, tell me your story. How's it going? How are you doing? And just for them to actually tell the complete truth about it. So I get so many grown men crying like babies in the office because they have never had anyone really genuinely right. be like, how are you black man? Right. How can Absolutely. I help you emotionally? Right. So, yeah. And someone commented on that aspect as well. And they talked about how as for black males, they are taught to be tough and Absolutely. not show emotion, mm -hmm. you know, because I mean, sometimes we see even when our, you know, boys are little, it's, you know, if they fall and get hurt, you know, it's like, don't cry. You know, mm -hmm. just dust it off and, and, yeah. and move on. And yeah. so a lot of us have been impacted on what has been instilled in us not to mm -hmm. um, show emotion. And so is that what you found, you know, with your clients? That, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, the trauma is deep. And yeah. like parents have to stop passing on their trauma, like mm -hmm. cut that out, you know, and your yeah. children are living in a different generation. They simply are. And so we cannot do the things that were done to us. And, you know, I can get on a whole rant about that because people will be like, well, I turned out all right and I got beaten. <laughs> no, you didn't. That's why right. you're sitting here talking to me. You are not okay. Right. So we have to stop lying to ourselves right. and tell ourselves the truth. Right. Absolutely. And Simone uh, in the chat room, she he says the stigma of the Superman uh, for the black men. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she says, "What we don't transform, we transfer." Amen. I Thank you that. for that. What a yeah. great comment, and it's a thousand percent correct. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. which one you gonna do? That's what I'm saying. At some yeah. point, it, it, at some point, it feels selfish to not help yourself, right? Absolutely. Because you will, de you most definitely will bleed on the others around you. Absolutely. And especially, <clears throat> specifically talking about black men um especially whom are fathers mm. um a lot of times they don't realize um some of the issues that once again they experienced with they when they were a child their sons are now going through that right. you right. know but because they refuse to recognize that anything was going on with them now they're not noticing you know it's kind of like oh he just needs to man up let me throw them in football and let me you know put them in all these mm -hmm. things to kind of mask we're just kind of putting that band-aid Right. So, okay. and, and this is why we're seeing this shift where we are calling men feminine now mm. because they say what's wrong with them. Yeah. Which is yeah. so sad. Like all mm. they're doing is saying what's wrong with them. And mm. we're being like, oh, they're weak. You know, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's just like, yeah, because, because generally generationally they have it's not been OK for them to say anything about how they feel other than anger, right. you know, or maybe happiness. Either they're happy or silly or mad or they don't get to be sad or afraid or yeah. whatever. Right. And so um, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. And so you're seeing this gap. Uh, with this generation because they do have access to others during uh, social media that they know now that they can talk about things, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're weak. It means they know how to communicate their thoughts and feelings, which most of us were not taught in the generation before us definitely weren't taught. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, this question comes from Ashley. Um, she says, how do we go about having conversations with our parents, uh, particularly our parents who are much older in age? Um, their, way their, ways. 
<laughs> their, their, their ways and thoughts are much different than what I would have imagined. So a lot of times it's hard having heart to heart conversations with them about past trauma. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. Go to therapy with them. Mm. We can also do family therapy. Family. You can do therapy with anyone you want to. And that therapist is going to help you express exactly what you want to express. But guess what? Therapists are good translators. So they'll help right. your parents understand it too. Right. Because right. sometimes our delivery just isn't great. Or we don't know how we don't know how to articulate what exactly. we're thinking. It's okay to be like, hey mom. I want to talk to you about something. Would you join me for a session? Mm -hmm. And sometimes people will say, well, my mama is not going to come to me. My daddy is not doing that. And I will say to them, well, tell them it's to help you. Say, hey, the therapist wants some insight about things you know. And then they'll be like, oh, okay, well, you want to know what I think? Oh, come. So you kind of have to play some mind yeah, Jedi absolutely. tricks with them, right? Um, but when they get there and understand it's a safe place, uh, you can work miracles. You can change mm -hmm. entire families and entire generations just from a couple of conversations. So I would suggest a therapist. Now, if you're just comfortable talking to your parent, you, you sit down and talk to them. But if you think it's going to go left, <laughs> then I would yeah. suggest doing a family therapy session yeah. and talking to them about what, but here's the thing. I'm always going to tell people this, meet people. And I just posted about this the other day, meet people where they are not where you want them to be. Mm. Right. So we do this thing, too, where we want our parents to change instantly just because we're woke. We want them to be woke. And that's not how life works. Right. right? And so um, it can take some time. But if they're willing to do the work, I'm willing to work with them. But if right. they're just dead set on not doing the work, OK, that's a different thing. But you can't expect them to just get it automatically. Right. right. Of course, this comes up a lot, like when people are coming out to their parents and things yeah. like that. Yeah. They're come along many many parents not everyone many parents will come along if you just give it some time but sometimes mm -hmm. we just want them to snap and change really yeah. quickly instead of meeting them where they are and then setting our boundaries around it so when i say meeting them where they are that doesn't mean letting them get away with it it's just mm -hmm. just like i'm gonna set my boundaries around it and then i'm gonna leave it right and see where it goes from there You there? Okay. Yep, I got you. <laughs> okay. But you were talking about <clears throat> with boundaries. Um, mm. which is so, <clears throat> excuse me, important. Um, how do we go about setting boundaries? I, I especially mm. in you know we talk about the black community. You know, a lot of times when we try to set boundaries, people think, "Oh, you've been disrespectful." <laughs> you know, yeah. you've been disrespectful. You know, how do we go about setting boundaries? Because I hear that word a lot when it comes to oh people, especially God. relationships with their family members, their parents. Mm -hmm. And us, parents. girl, we are horrible yeah. with boundaries. Yeah. Oh, we, are <laughs> we are horrible. Why are we horrible with boundaries? I don't know. Maybe that's also generational. Right. Because I have a high uh, Nigerian and African population. And that's where the no boundaries start, honey. They don't have no <laughs> boundaries. No boundaries. The parents just expect things. Yeah, anyway. So boundaries are one of my favorite things to talk about. So you're asking, how do I set boundaries, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, the first thing is to know what you want, right? Because right. a lot of people just like, oh, I want to set a boundary. What is the boundary? <laughs> um, I want my mom to call before she comes over. Stop just walking up in my house. Why don't you call first, mama? Right? So so I, I, need, I need to be able to clearly define my own boundary before I go to you with anything. I need to have right. a clear understanding of what it is I want. And so then you just simply make those requests and you don't have to be ugly about it. It's more right. like, hey, mom, I love to see you. Um, if you don't mind, can you start calling before you come? Because sometimes mm -hmm. I'm in the middle of something or sometimes I honestly just don't have the capacity. And, you know, if you want, we can schedule a time where we can meet up together every Tuesday or Thursday. Um, that way you, I already know you're coming. But right. as far as you just popping up, I think we should stop doing that. Yeah, that wasn't me. Right. That wasn't right. me. Right. It was honest. It was direct. Right. It was clear and specific. Right. And so because I know with us, everything our parents think, oh, you being disrespectful. Our mm -hmm. family members think, oh, you showing out. No, uh, I'm just, yeah. just going to set a boundary. Now, 
When you set a boundary, nine times out of 10 people hate that. Hate, of course, boundary violators don't want you to create boundaries. So you have to let them feel however they're going to feel about it. And that's our problem. We want everything to end in a fairy tale. And sometimes it just doesn't. So right. if, mom, if mama gets an attitude, she just not going to, I'm not going to answer the door when she comes. Cause I'm not, <laughs> and you got to be willing to do that. Cause I set the boundary. Not only did I set the boundary, I gave you an alternative option. We can mm-hmm. set up a time where we can meet every Tuesday and Thursday. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you don't respect that, then I have to have a consequence. The problem is people set boundaries and don't have consequences. Mm-hmm. Right. And right. so, you have to say, if you violate my boundary, then you will not be welcome here. You have to be willing to say that, but we scary, yeah. right? We, we are. We just are because we, you know, we're always. Yeah, we're Mama always don't have no problem hurting your feelings. Yeah. She don't have no problem hurting your feelings. Yeah. Mama tell you what she want to tell you. That's so true. we gotta stop that. We gotta That's stop coddling each other. That's yeah. very true. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> um, and uh, of course, I, I wanted to delve into this because with myself uh, working in the school system, uh, mm-hmm. we see a lot of mental health um, taking place uh, in our schools now, um, and so. When it comes to mental health in the schools, what is what is your um, perception of how much n- mental health support is needed, um, and the lack thereof uh, when it comes to our school? Oh, child, that's an excellent <laughs> question. They need one therapist per five children, if you mm-hmm. ask me. <laughs> my, best, my best friend is a teacher, and she's like literally. A great portion of my time is spent putting out fires for nervous, anxious children. Absolutely. All of their emotional issues, which has nothing to do with her actually teaching the class. Absolutely. And so it is that serious now where the kids can't even function in class uh, because I call it the anxiety epidemic. There's some yeah. issues going on. Yeah. All these kids nervous and we got to figure out what that's yeah. about. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, we need therapists, but guess what? They're just throwing one or two therapists in an entire freaking school and saying, fix it, Jesus, fix these children. Now you do have some creating like they'll contract outside people and that's fine too. But at the end of the day, I think it would be beautiful to have in-house because they know the children, they interact with them. It's extremely important. If our children's mental health is not there, how do you expect them to be excelling? It's not possible. It's not possible. It's just not possible. And that's common sense, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And and that's the thing, uh, you know, especially nowadays because um, our kids are really dealing with a whole you know, different ball game than, yeah. than some of us were dealing with um, coming mm-hmm. up in schools. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I know for some of the students um, coming in specifically, I remember hearing a teacher talk about these set of children being quote unquote pandemic children. Yeah, and it so, deeply troubled them. Yeah. It yeah. deeply troubled them. Not yeah. only did it do that, it affected their ability to socialize appropriately. Mm-hmm. So now we're talking about it. We'll have another session about that later. <laughs> <laughs> deeply, deeply scarred these children. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. yeah. And so you see, uh, as you mentioned, the, the social skills and, and lack thereof. Um, and, and so you just see the shift and this difference. And so how as parents, how mm-hmm. should parents be showing up? Um, for Mm -hmm. our children in the midst of this, because a lot of times it it seems foreign that even parents nowadays take the time to ask their children, how was your day? What's going on? You know, um, they're just not really interested in the actual response that the child gives. Yeah. Yeah. And then the child is not connected enough to tell them the truth anyway, if they did. So it starts with this, take yourself to therapy. (laughs) you're probably spilling your stuff on your kid but secondly create create a line of open communication and nurturance I know that we're very big on discipline in our community but I promise you in 2024 it is more powerful to have structure and nurturance Mm. you can't just have discipline I love discipline trust me I'm super structured but (laughs) you cannot have a healthy child in this society without nurturance yeah. that don't mean being soft on them and let them get away with things that's not what i mean but do you actually genuinely be like hey how are you doing what's that new song you was listening to the other day tell me yeah. about that versus oh my god turn this crap off i don't know why i don't even know what that boy's saying 
And so what does that tell the kid? You're yeah. not interested in anything I have to yes. say. You're just interested in judging me and disciplining yeah. me. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. It's really that simple. So open communication and nurturance is how you get that started for sure. Absolutely. Because I myself, I have a, I have a 10 year old oh, yeah. and who is heavily, heavily, heavily into anime. Yeah. And oh, so, wow. you know, I'm like, oh boy. Yeah, no, it's not your thing. He doesn't have to know that. You just go and say, tell me about Naruto <laughs> and what he do. Exactly. Let me watch it with you. Because it doesn't I, matter. You're yeah. bonding with your kid. That's exactly. what matters. And that's I have important. found over the, over time that, that that's how you do bond, you know, Absolutely. because it's easy to say, I'm not interested in that. I don't understand that oh, you're going about your business, but it's also creating that line of correct. division, correct. you know? So when she was interested, you know, first got into it. And so recently, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we went, I took it, we took her to an anime convention. Mm -hmm. uh, and so wow. it was like, and she feels really seen. Yeah. And I was able to be like, okay, this is her world. This yeah, is what she, you know, beautiful. like. So, and she not yeah. hurt nobody. That's a beautiful yeah. world to be in. She's minding her business, watching anime. <laughs> Some 10-year-olds are doing much worse things. So she's yeah. fine. But yeah. you made her feel seen. And yeah. that's exactly what I mean. You don't have to love it. But yeah. like. Yeah, like your yeah. kid wants to go to a convention. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's demonstrate support and nurturance. Absolutely. So beautiful. Absolutely. Mm. Um, Rayshawn says, how do you open a line of communication with someone you haven't spoken to in years? Mm. Topic <laughs> number topic number 35 with black people, ego. <laughs> we have massive egos. <laughs> And yeah. that's trauma response, but we'll get into that another time. That's a trauma <laughs> response. It's not real ego. It's fake ego, right? Right. How do I open the line? You are obviously going to have to reach out to them. You're mm -hmm. going to have to reach out to them and you're going to have to be okay with possibly being rejected. Mm -hmm. We don't like rejection, right? So we nope. just let that one year turn into two years and two years turn into three years. Versus me just being open and honest is like, hey, you know what? I really miss you. I've been thinking about you. I hate, I really hate the way things ended with us. I'm open to reconnecting if you are too. Could yeah. we at least start with a conversation? Yeah. And if they don't respond, they don't respond. But the universe rewards you because you did your part, exactly. right? And it's so if they want to hold on to hurt and anger, let them hold on to hurt and anger. But you right. can free yourself. It is so freeing to just do that. You don't lose anything. Right. Thinking, thinking that you lose something is ego driven. You get to say, hey, you know what? I'm not the one who let that relationship fail. I yeah. tried. Yeah. I tried. And best case scenario, they say, oh, my God, I've been thinking about you, too. I'm glad you reached out. Yeah. You don't have anything to lose by doing it. Yeah. Right. So we just have to get over that ego and do what we need to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Hope and, that was and helpful. A, and, a, mm -hmm. and a lot of times when you reach out, I found to people that you haven't talked to in years, there's a lot of what I call um, mis, uh, miscommunication and, and missing dialogue. You know, some people are perceiving a situation that happened one way, you're perceiving it another. Mm -hmm. And so, a lot of times it's just like that miscommunication and misunderstanding right. and nobody took that time to say, Hey, let's talk about this. Exactly. It was just, you know what? You mm -hmm. block. I do I a lot. Of, I do a lot of relationship counseling yeah. and 90 and 99% of these people's <laughs> issues is assumptions. And like, mm. we learn these things as kids that we don't apply. What did they used to say about assuming? Assuming makes an ass out of you. And right. I, it's a true yes. statement because yes. you will make assumptions about people and you can't be more far from the truth. Instead of me opening my mouth and saying, did you slam that door? Cause you had an attitude. I just assume you had an attitude. When you right. could have slammed the door because you was trying to hurry up and get to the restroom. <laughs> these are real stories, right? Real so stories. these are real things real that real happen stories. in therapy. Like, so it's just like we, again, it's the ego, right? right? And stop making assumptions, open your mouth and talk. But the problem is, guess what? We haven't learned how to communicate. Yeah, Our, our past generations didn't do a good job of that particular part. Right. Right. And so we have to learn to communicate our thoughts and feelings in a healthy way. Right. right. Absolutely. And I think that we have to also and it, what you were speaking about with generations is specifically with my mom. She she comes from a family of nine, nine siblings. Mm, wow. So my question for her is always different little stuff and how she related, you know, uh, mm -hmm. with her parents. And so oftentimes um, there's not enough time. 
Mm-hmm. People didn't have enough time to take and sit down, you know, with their children to really discover what was going on. You know, they were too busy trying to get to work, trying to make okay. ends meet, okay. trying to keep the house going. Mm-hmm. And nowadays, um, some of us are still in that same. Oh, yes. Yeah, hustle and bustle. Yeah. yeah. Nobody yeah. has a clue what no. their kids are doing when no. they're gone. Yeah. No. <laughs> you know, so when you, you know, when, when we see, you know, little Billy or whoever online, making death threats and bomb threats and mom is saying, Oh, I had no idea. Meanwhile, he got ammo under his Absolutely. bed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, he got all the, you know, he's pulling up all these mm-hmm. things on the internet and it's because we don't take the time to connect and get in tune, um, you know, with those individuals around Correct. us, you know, exactly yeah. right. we gotta, we gotta do a better job. And yeah. it starts with like being honest, like, Hey, don't just be like, how was your day? Because the kid, I swear, is just going to give you one or two words. Yeah. Fine, good. Okay. You have yeah. to be specific. Like, tell me something funny that happened at school. Did anybody get into a fight? You just got right. to act yeah. like you were with your homie, right? Absolutely. Like, what's that little girl that you like, what's going on with that? Yeah. You know, you have to have, have specific things. Stop being like, you treat your kids like strangers passing in the street. That's what we do to strangers. Hey, what's up? You good? You good? I'm good. Okay. Right. No, we have to converse with them. But here's the thing. We do run out of gas by the end of the day. So it's just like, did we feed them? Good. Did we pay them? Good. Who all right. did the thing? Nobody so heard. I'm not bashing parents at all because I understand that my yeah. parents were extremely hard workers. Yeah. And maybe they just didn't have that left in the tank. But if we know better, we can do we better. Can do so better. now after today, if you watch this, you know better. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And you can do better. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. What at the end of the day? Um, I know that there's this big question that people, you know, well, what is therapy going to do? What are, what, are, what are the benefits of therapy? In your opinion, mm-hmm. what are um, some of those benefits of, mm-hmm. of making that decision to get therapy? Yeah, it could save your life. Let's just be honest. It could save yeah. It can save your life. But one thing I really love about it is I now understand the power of people telling their story, like mm. telling your story without judgment. You're the center of attention. Someone's just listening to you. I did not realize in our community how much that has never, ever happened. So I get a 40 year old, a 50 year old, a 70 year old woman for the first time saying this is my life experience and Mm -hmm. that will forever change you. Right. But also, of course, therapy is going to give you tips, tools, techniques, resources, someone to come. I literally have clients who are well, they're okay now, but they still be like, nope, I want to do my therapy because they literally be like, when I don't do therapy, stuff goes wrong, you know, (laughs) and they find it a good place to vent, to work through my problems, to come up with ideas, to figure out my future goals is not just, I think people think they got to sit around and just talk about sad stuff. Honestly, Mm -hmm. We're going to do that maybe the first couple of sessions. Then after that, my whole purpose as a therapist is get you to the best quality of life. I cannot spend all my time talking about your past if I'm going to work you towards a better future. For Absolutely. You. So it's actually a very empowering thing to have someone sit with you and be like, you know what? I really do want to open that business. OK, Tommy, let's talk about how we get there and what's stopping you. What are the what's the self-doubt, the worry, the fear, the stuff Absolutely. you would never say to no one else? You could say to that therapist. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. How important, you know, nowadays people talk about having a safe space. They talk mm-hmm. about um, even having a, a circle, that circle that uh, mm-hmm. you can be a part of. Um, how important is it uh, for us to have that safe space um, and to have that circle of people that, you know, we can share what we're going through? Is that, you know, Come on, yeah. that Absolutely. exchange between, mm-hmm. you know, you and your mm-hmm. circle? And, and, yeah. And just so you guys know, the suicide rate for black people is getting higher and higher, mm-hmm. just to be clear, yeah. because we are just holding our pain in yeah. and not being able to express that because maybe yeah. we don't think we have a safe place. A safe place is so important. Again, that might save your life. A healthy social support system. So important. Nowadays, it's all all these people saying, I don't have no friends. I don't trust people. Da, da, da. That is not a flex. Yeah, that is not a flex. How do you think our ancestors made it through slavery? Did they do that? 
isolating themselves. Yeah. They did not. Yeah. How do you think our parents, our families made it during uh, segregation? Did they do that by themselves? No, yeah. anything that's hard, we typically need a village for. And that's we should village. utilize that village. And so I encourage people to utilize this. Now, mind you, it doesn't, you can use your your village for very specific things. You might not want to tell them your business, but you can say, hey girl, I really need somebody to come and watch this show with me tonight because I just don't want to be by myself. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to be telling them about your deep, dark thoughts. You can go to your therapist with that. But yes, utilize your support system. Find you a safe place. Even just one person, yeah. uh, again, can potentially save your life. Yeah, absolutely. Because, it, and that's the thing about, um, and, and I'm thankful that, you know, I don't have a large circle, mm -hmm. but the circle that I do have of, of individuals that if I get gone or they don't hear from me, mm -hmm. you know, for a certain amount of days, you know, they're like, okay, all right, what's going on? Mm -hmm. I haven't talked to you, you know, and so having people um, who are able to check on you. And so one of the things that um, I started um, actually when I, I first during my pregnancy um, with my daughter is um, I did mommy check-ins, right? So oh, I had all these friends that I was in school with and we were all just happened to be <laughs> wow. at the same time. Oh, no. So mm -hmm. my thing was, how are you? You mm -hmm. know, because, right. um, and I don't know, you know, and, and I like to feel that, you know, that was something that God, you know, God led me to do at that time mm -hmm. to check in on these people because oftentimes, People truly, even in today's time, don't think that anybody cares about them sometimes. Correct. Correct. You know? And like, black <laughs> women are very much struggling with postpartum depression, Absolutely. just like just like white women, but we don't talk yes. about it. Right. Like, oh, because strong black woman, she's fine. Right. No, right. I have had so many clients, yeah. they did not even realize, oh, it's because I, oh, postpartum, what's that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, your experience. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's great yeah. to have a circle of friends who number one can identify with exactly. your experience, and number two exactly. can just genuinely check on you. That's yeah. a beautiful thing. Yeah, and like you said, it doesn't always have to be you know um, bad things. It could be you know what, how you know what's what's going on great this week. Yeah. You know what's you know what's exactly. new for you. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's changing the dynamic of, of how things mm -hmm. you know can be and what it looks like. And so um, at, at the end of the day. Um, when people, when we talk about uh, mental health and how it affects the black community, um, the lack of resources, mm. um, can be a heavy issue for a lot of people, specifically black people in their communities. Okay. How do we go about tapping into resources when it may be limited, um, in our community? Mm -hmm. It's extremely limited, yeah. especially for Black men. It's very hard. Um, I struggle to have Black male therapists to refer people to, you wow. know, like some people just want to see a dude and that's fine. Like, yeah. but I struggle to have a long list of, I should have a long list of Black male therapists to refer. Yeah. I don't even have that. So yeah. we definitely need to be nurturing that community a lot more. But I will tell you that the starting place is two sites that I really love. Therapy for Black Girls, which you've probably heard of, yeah. but, then, but then they also have therapy for Black men, right? Oh. And, right, and people don't even know that, right? So yeah. go to that site and get you a therapist. It's all people yeah. that look like you, and then you can sort it out by what you know what you think you need from a therapist. And then the third resource that I will give is something called Love Land, Love Land Foundation. I'm absolutely in love with this organization. They literally provide free therapy vouchers to women of color, black women, right? Wow. So that's the only caveat you got. You do have to be a black woman yeah. and they may give you four sessions and basically you get to still pick your own therapist, which is so dope. Wow. You, so let's say you come to me and you be like, I can't afford it. And then I send you to that site and they will give you a voucher. So basically they will pay me. So they'll, they'll be like the first four sessions are on us. Right. Wow. And so the help is there. The help is there. Please utilize that uh, organization. And yeah, I love that organization and I want there to be more like that for uh, black men and kids as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, at the end of the day, what do you feel? Um, what do you feel has impacted you to stay in this field? I know you say, you know, this is not just something, you know, because truly we have people out here, you know, they just go and get in a piece of paper and saying, okay, 
you know, I'm going to talk to a few people. But for this, you know, this is you through and through. And so what keeps Genesis Blue falling yeah. into this? And and I mentioned this because recently, you know, you, you made a switch um, in, in your day to day, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. expound mm. on that a little bit. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I quit, I quit my corporate job, right? I had a corporate <laughs> mental health job, which is not very different from regular corporate jobs, unfortunately, where they're yeah. not prioritizing the actual mental health, but they're prioritizing how much they can get paid right. or how, how what numbers they can get. Um, and then you have people over you who have no experience in mental health trying to tell you what you're going to do. Ooh. And it's yeah. a no for me, dog. And so <laughs> when my when my stomach, I, I had never experienced anxiety, but when your stomach Stomach starts hurting for no reason every time you get up and go to that job. And on your off days, you feel fine. Yeah. That tells you some things. You're not supposed to be there. And I don't believe I'm standing in no place that my spirit, because right, the gut feeling, that's Ooh. spiritual. That's a spiritual thing. Uh, everything that your body responds to physically is telling you something. And right. we tend to ignore it. Stop ignoring it. It's there for a reason. It's telling you red alert, red alert, get out of there. So okay. I got out of there because I did not believe in what was happening or uh, that I was being valued there for what I can do. So mm -hmm. you have to move around. So, yes. yeah, I do believe that um, we shouldn't stay in places where our spirit is telling us yeah. not to be. What was the other part of your question? Why did and, I leave? And, oh, why am I still doing this? Oh, yeah. God, because I'm a philanthropist. I'm a human, a humanitarian. I love yes. people and I love black people. Uh, <laughs> and I want to see us be healed and have joy and have good family relationships and have healthy, loving, intimate relationships and have right. great friendships. That's my dream for our people. Happiness. Absolutely. Most people that I talk to, pretty much all people that I talk to, if you come into my office, you're looking for one or all of the following peace, love, and happiness. It's really mm -hmm. that simple. You could say you're coming in for a multitude of things, but we're always going to break it down and find that you really just want to feel peace, love, and happiness. Absolutely. Absolutely. And peace. Whew, people don't understand. Like, and I, and I yeah. used to, you know, I used to hear growing up people like, I just, I just want some peace, you know? Yeah. I'm yeah. like, okay. Now you really now, resonate. Now, with it, right? <laughs> now, as I'm getting older, I'm Hallelujah. like, Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. I'm really annoying. Like mm -hmm. I really, you know, because sometimes things get so heavy. And they mm. get so deep. And I think that especially when we are people that um, are those type of people, like you say, we get involved with people. We want to help people. Sometimes we take on those, those bags. We absorb it. Mm -hmm. yeah. we absorb and you absorb it. it and it's draining, Correct. you know, and it's easy for people to say, well, don't let that bother you. Don't, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but Absolutely. I'm one of those people. Sometimes it just. Oh no, you need to unplug sometimes. Yeah. You can't yeah. save everybody. I take That's my right. cape off. Mm -mm. That's right. Mm -mm. I gotta yeah. recharge. I can't <laughs> one of my favorite quotes is I can't yeah. save you from drowning if I'm sinking. Mm. I cannot save you from drowning if I'm sinking. I that's first right. have to save myself absolutely. and then I can help you. And that's absolutely. how I see it. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so um out here, and, and of course you gave some great resources and I did drop them um, in the chat room so that people are able to reach out to those as well. And so at the end of the day, how does Genesis Blue keep her mental health? Because, you know, it's one thing for us to help people. And as you said, sometimes we got to pour on and love on ourselves. Yeah. How do you keep yourself going um, yeah. through? Um, mm. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I'm a Gemini. Right. So I can be like, ah, and then I can be like super quiet. No one talk to me. I enjoy <laughs> peace, quiet and stillness. So, for example, when I leave yeah. my private practice, I like total silence or maybe a podcast in the background. I just okay. be quiet. I just be quiet. Don't call me. I don't talk to nobody. It's not personal. Just give me my time to recharge my battery. Right. Definitely. And then of course I, I love music. I still love music. Um, I love sports and, you know, physical activities and spending time with the people that I love, you know, yeah. pretty simple. And travel, girl. It's tra um, I've been traveling now. That's my first love is traveling. <laughs> <laughs> I like to go outside. 
<laughs> just as I said, she like to be outside, outside mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Well, and look, and the weather is getting even better, so it's yes, really time to get out. I got some trips to plan. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, go get on plane and go. Yes, absolutely. So, to those individuals out here, specifically um, our black people um, who have dealt with that trauma in their family, maybe still be dealing with that trauma in their family, um, learning new ways to navigate. What would be your words um, of encouragement? to those about stepping beyond their trauma um, and getting the help that they need? Well, I mean, here's the thing. You deserve to heal. I don't know why we think we don't deserve to heal, that we're just supposed to sit in our pain, but we're not. Like, you deserve to heal. So first, giving yourself permission. Like, okay, okay. It's okay for me to go heal. It's okay for me to say these things out loud. It's okay for me to confront my demons. It's okay for me to cut that family member off. Oops, we're not going to get into that. right? But giving yourself the permission to heal um, and to have someone around you like a therapist who can help you do that because ultimately you deserve peace, love, happiness, and whatever else it is you really want in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said. Well said. And of course, we definitely appreciate you coming by tonight. And um, as you guys can see, we we, we could have took this a whole bunch of different uh, yeah. um, the topics. <laughs> right? So we're going to get her back on here and talk about some other stuff as well. But yeah. uh, I definitely appreciate you coming on here and just providing that real um, mm-hmm. aspect. I think one of the things that uh, when people think about therapists is you're going to get somebody who's, you know, just... Prime square. 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 Yeah. I'm not square. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's easier, I feel, to relate to somebody, you mm-hmm. know. Um, mm-hmm. first of all, who as we mentioned, looks like you. Let's yeah. let's be honest Amen. about that at times. And so, mm-hmm. um, and, and to be able to have that dialogue and, and just be real and authentic. Um, and what we say and how we express ourselves. And so I definitely appreciate you and what you're doing for our community um, and the community all over together and definitely appreciate it. And so for the folks out here, they may want to know, like, how can I connect with her? You know, all those great things. Oh, and I forgot to mention you guys. I'm not going to leave without her talking about the Blue Room um, as well. Uh, So tell the folks a little bit about (laughs) the Blue Room. All right. So, yeah. It's still a work in progress because unfortunately I'm still a perfectionist, though I know better. <laughs> I am rolling out the blue room. And basically yeah. the blue room is a place for us to talk about the things that really matter to us. I'm yeah. very, I don't know about y'all, but I'm so sick of all this gossip and everybody negative and attacking it. Y'all don't get tired of that. I'm yeah. exhausted. Yeah. Right. So if you as you can see in, in my background, it says moving from gossip to growth. Mm. So I want the blue room to contain conversations that are real and authentic, especially to our community that involve growth, because I think so many conversations don't end with what are we going to do or what's the plan or how do we grow from this or how do we learn? Right. Right. And so that's what the blue room. So please follow me at the blue room show. I'm I'm doing a podcast. Um, I'm going to be doing in-person things, but I'm also starting something called Date Club because I'm also sick of how negatively we're talking about relationships with mm-hmm. Black people um, because I yeah. know at least 10 married couples who have been married for a very long time. So I'm tired of this whole we hate each other thing that right. they have going on. It's just not true. But I want to help people date better. That's so awesome. uh, yeah. look out for a date club as well. But all you got to do is follow me at the Blue Room Show to get nice. more and more information. So stay tuned. Thank y'all so much. And man, you're such a great interviewer. You ask good questions. Like for real, when I blow up, I'm going to have you doing something. I don't know what it is, but you're the kind of people that I want to be around. Oh, I appreciate I want to be around. And I'm, I'm going to come to South Carolina sooner than later and I'm going to look. Because <laughs> people do not know how to interview. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I truly appreciate you guys. Make sure you hit her up. I have uh, posted the information in the chat room so you can connect with her. Um, definitely go check out the Blue Room show. Uh, once again, thank you so much for coming on here thank and hanging so out with us and sharing with us. We definitely appreciate you guys. And folks, don't forget, if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and drop those in the chat room. 
Uh, we can answer those after the show. Uh, if you're catching the replay, you missed a good show, but you can watch it again uh, when it starts back <laughs> up. But oh, nevertheless, man. we appreciate everybody that come came through, mm -hmm. that shared your comments. And even if you just listen tonight, uh, sometimes it's good to just sit back, listen, mm -hmm. and absorb um, what's being shared. And so we appreciate you guys that have did that as well. And so mm -hmm. we're getting ready to get out of here. We hope that you guys have mm -hmm. a Peace, fantastic family. Peace. <laughs> rest of your week and uh we'll see you next time right here on the beautiful butterfly show you guys have a great evening peace <laughs>